Good afternoon or good evening. It's good to be able to be with you tonight. I appreciate you being here. Of course, I'm Harold Michael Phelps from Pleasant View Baptist Church, and we are in the study of the book of Revelation. We started this study back, gosh, a month and a half, two months ago, really end times, call it living in the last days or living in the end times. And so we're up to Revelation chapter 13. If you were with us last time, Revelation chapter 12 is a tremendous insight into the whole structure of the war zone that's been taking place ever since uh, God created man and of course Satan got thrown out of heaven or Lucifer got thrown out of heaven and became the devil down here so he's been trying to disrupt all that God's been trying to do ever since then so that was a clip into the into the picture of the summary of the whole world's battle really conflict that's heavenly in heaven as well as on earth so this war has been taking place ever since then it's still taking place and so during the book of Revelation, is still an extension and the finishing of that war. We're at the middle of the, of the tribulation period. And of course, uh, uh, we talked about that last time. And so I want to move into chapter 13. As we move into chapter 13, of course, we, we discover the Antichrist as the Antichrist. Now, we went back uh, a few months ago, or really a few weeks ago, rather, now, when we looked at Revelation chapter 6, as the um, scroll began to be unfolded and the seals began to uh, be broken open by the lamb that was slain and came out behind the throne, we saw the four beasts, we saw the Antichrist. Really, it sits on all four of these beasts, I believe, the white horse <clears throat> being, uh, he'd been given a crown, was given to him. This authority, this ruling was given to him. And he had a bow, but he had no arrow. So he was a, a, a piece, a, a, an antichrist of peace, riding a white horse. You know, had the image and everything of a peace maker. But it turned to a red horse real quick. You know, it's in the first three and a half years of the tribulation period. It turned to a red horse, which is a red horse of war. He had the power to take peace from the earth. So he was peace, now he's, he's taking peace. And then, of course, the third horse was kind of a, a product of that, which when you have war, you have famine. So we've got... The black horse of famine. The same Antichrist sits on all these horses, but uh, you know this is he's changing horses. And then we have the pale horse, which is death and Hades. And so that's kind of where it, under, it unfolds. But he's the Antichrist that rides on all four of these horses and just it introduces him as a world leader. But when we get to chapter 13, he is introduced as a beast. Now, when he's introduced as a beast, this is not a. I mean, this is without question a a. Um, a slap against his character here because he is a destructive beast. He's kind of like a mad dog, you know. You can't do anything with him. <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, we, we want to turn to chapter 13. But before we do, I want us to have a word of prayer. I'm glad that you're here. I hope that you've seen up to where we are. I know we have some loyal followers out there. And so I'm glad that you're able to, to follow tonight. And I, I want to ask you to bow with prayer so we jump into this chapter 13, which is a tough chapter. I mean, it is a tough chapter. And I'm kind of burdened as we as we unfold this chapter. If you go back to chapter 11, you know, he said he, John was told to eat the book that was in the hand of, of, of the, the angel there. And he ate that book and he said it tasted good, but it made him sick. And, you know, when we talk about the coming of the Lord in the end times, you know, to us Christians, it tastes pretty good. It sounds pretty good. We'll be with the Lord and everything will be wonderful. But when we see how that's going to unfold and the rest of the story, it kind of makes us sick. It's just a burden on our hearts. If you care about people at all, it burdens you. And so that's kind of where we are. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being here today. We ask you, Lord Father, let our Lord Father, our mouth speak wisdom, words of wisdom, words of understanding. Guide our thoughts, guide our mouth, and Lord, open the ears of those who are listening, that Lord Father, they'll be able to understand. And uh, we pray this in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord, and amen. Now, I'm going to encourage you to do something here. I've got two Bibles open, okay? i got a Bible open in the book of Revelation, and i got a Bible open in the book of Daniel, chapter 7. Okay, so if you can't understand chapter 13 of the book of Revelation, unless you equate it to Daniel, chapter 7. And so Daniel kind of was a prelude to the book of Revelation. God gave Daniel a whole lot of insight into the very last events of history. And he didn't understand it at the time. He said so. And God told him he, nothing he was to worry about. It wasn't for him anyway. It was for the future. 
and we are the future. So then he wrote the book of Revelation, which lines up with it. And so we, I want you to encourage, if you got two Bibles, open one of them to Daniel chapter 7, one of them to Revelation chapter 13. Those will be the chapters that we will really major on tonight, all right? Chapter 13, we've got 18 verses, and they're jam-packed. This is the declaration of the Antichrist. Again, he's already been on the scene. Matter of fact, he will even be alive before the rapture takes place because he's a grown man. Therefore, he'll be alive. But uh, he, I don't think he takes prominence or in any way uh, is influential at all until after the rapture. But the rapture takes place, and then he begins to take his spot and, and of course, have all the answers during the first, day, th first three and a half years of tribulation. And then, But we're in the last three and a half now. Last part of the seven, and it is extreme. And Jesus said, made it clear in Matthew 24, that when you see the abomination of desolation, that statue that's standing in the temple in Jerusalem, to flee from Judea because it's about to get so bad. It's worse than ever on the planet or ever would be. And so uh, the Jewish people were to run and hide. So we talked about that last week. But in chapter 13, we're revealing that Antichrist. Now he's taking his position as the beast. He's not, a, he's not a rider of a horse. He is a prominent world leader who is taking over the world. Now, in our world today, I want you to think about this. In our world today, <clears throat> we've been battling leaders for years who had ideology and ideas about government and how things ought to be run. And, have, and, and of course, we're hungry for power. So they've been pushing their agenda on the rest of the world for years. We have communism that's been pushing. We have fascism that was pushing. Of course, now we have the Islamic world that's pushing pushing their beliefs and their ideas on the rest of the world. They're forcing it. They're trying to force it on the rest of the world. Now, Christianity, some would say, well, Christianity's done the same thing. Really not, really. I mean, Jesus, if people did it, they did it out of rebellion in their own heart. Jesus never wanted us to force Jesus or force heaven or force Christianity on anybody. Jesus is not going to make anybody go to heaven or serve him kicking and screaming. He is not, and it's not the way to do it. He said, Go and invite them, compel them, share the story. But you, everybody has a right to make a decision whether they want to serve Jesus or not. And so it's a different world. We've been fighting ideology and, and ideas of how things ought to be run for years. Just like today, you know, China, for example. Uh, China has, has a, a dictator, really, and he is a communist dictator, and he has an idea that he wants to push his belief on everybody else. Russia was the same way. In Vietnam, we were fighting Vietnam to keep them from trying to push it on, on everybody else, you know, and trying to push their ideas on everybody else, make everybody serve and work with them with the way they think the world ought to be run. And so there's always been this world, world dictator thought pattern. In this era, the last three and a half years, the Antichrist, this world leader, will have the power and authority to push his belief system on the rest of the world. And the trauma and the dilemmas that are going on all over around us will give him the ability, the perfect storm, to be able to make all that take place. And the only people that are not under his thumb are those who have gone and hid or those who die because they refuse to follow him. And so in chapter 13, And I stood in, upon the sands of the sea and saw the beast, saw the beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads, the heads, plural, the names blasphemy. Okay? I mean, this beast is declared right out of the gate as wicked and evil and blasphemous. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet was, uh, were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. The dragon, the red dragon, gave him his power and his seat and the great authority. So this is a devil-backed world leader, okay? And he is described as a beast well, for a reason. For a reason. I mean, it's not like he's a human. He's a beast. He's driven like a beast. He's cruel like a beast. And he's got this image. He's, he says, and I saw he was likened to a leopard, and his feet was like a bear, and his mouth was like a lion. Now, we'll talk a little bit about that in a few moments, but the dragon, the old devil, is giving him his power and his authority, just so you know. In verse 3, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, 
and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? I mean, he's, he's empowered. The, all the powers of hell are backing him. Now, I want you to remember when Jesus said, Go ye into all the world. Prior to that statement was verse 18, when he said, All power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Go with that power. In this setting, the devil is saying, I've got the power. It's been extended to me, and I'm going to empower the beast. And so he does. He's empowering the beast. Now, the beast is wanting to be worshipped, and that's a big deal. And they worshipped the dragon, which is the devil, which gave power unto the beast, they worship the beast, saying, who's like the beast? Who can make war against the beast? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months, which is three and a half years. We know about that. The last three and a half years of the seven-year period. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. He blasphemed his name, the tabernacle, and his tabernacle, his dwelling place, and them that dwell in heaven. I mean, he is really spitting it out. He's blaspheming God. He's blaspheming the, the name of God. He's blaspheming the place that God lives. The tabernacle. You know, of course, he's been thrown out of heaven. Remember last, last chapter, chapter 12, he is escorted out, thrown out, and can't come back. Don't come back. And so he is blaspheming the dwelling place of God, the tabernacle of God, and them that dwell in heaven, everybody else. And it was given unto him uh, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindred, all tongues, all nations. Now this is given to him. Notice even back in the, uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, everything was given to him. He didn't, have, he didn't conquer any. He didn't buy any. He didn't purchase any. He didn't have power of his own. All this was extended to him. He, he walks around like he's the one that's got the power, but it was given to him. And so uh, Satan has the power given to him, and now Satan is giving it to this guy. The dragon is giving it to this guy. It was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given to him over all the kindred and tongues and nations. And all that dwelt upon the earth shall, do, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Did you get that? It was given unto him to make war against the saints and to overcome them. This is during the tribulation period. Who are the saints? Those that have come to believe during this tribulation period. Remember, had two prophets that were preaching and got killed. Uh, now we've had 144,000 preachers preaching. And uh, so there's a whole lot of preaching going on. And so there's a whole lot of people becoming believers, especially in the midst of this turmoil that's going on on the planet. So I was, he was given him the power to make war against the saints, to overcome them. Power was given to him to overcome to over, him over all kindred, over tongues, over nations. I mean, it seemed like he's ruling the world. And this power has been given to it. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Okay? If any man having an ear, let him hear. I mean, if you can understand this, understand it. He that overcometh, or he that leadeth into captivity, shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Hear the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast, two beasts, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns, like unto a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and the first beast before him, and came the, and, and, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of the miracles which he did with power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And, 
and, and he had power to give life into the image of the beast that the image of the beast should be should both speak and cause that many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calls all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or on their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell or say they had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is the wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred and three score and six. Six hundred and sixty six. Six, six, six. All right. Now let's look here just a minute. We're looking, of course, at the two beasts, the two beasts that have come forth, uh, and God has empowered them to be ruling at this time to bring suppression, to destruction to the planet and all those who will not worship the, the dragon. Now think about this. Now as we read this, you know, Satan, in chapter 12 or 17, stood on the sands of the sea as a symbol, symbolic of the Gentile nations, and as the sea as well. Satan calls uh, out a superman, so to be, speak, a superman. He's, he's called a beast, but it's a man. It's a human. And that's what he's really trying to say. This is not a physical beast. This is a human that has beast qualities because he's so dogmatically destructive. And so, and, and uh, you know, he says, he calls a superman from the nations and reveals the true nature of this world. But up to now, the Antichrist has been operating peacefully as a friend of Israel. But now, he breaks the covenant with Israel, promising that he would protect the feder, you know, pr would, would protect them, as he is controlling and in that power position to protect Israel. But now, this world's ruler is to be revealed as the satanic horror that he is. Okay. Now, I want you to look with me before we get into the rest of this, because in this passage here, he, he goes to describing a beast. And, and the beast, of course, that he describes has qualities like animals. Now, if you look over in Daniel chapter 7, now I've got to look at Daniel chapter 7. And so don't let this complicate you, because Daniel's a big book, but he gives us insight into the future, and we're going to put these two together. So let's look at Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and vision of his head upon his bed. Now, <clears throat> the vision, he was on his bed, the vision, he was had a dream. And then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. And Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, behold, four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea. Now, the sea always represented the world or the earth. And four great beasts came up out of the sea, diverse one from another, or different one from another. The first was like a lion. Now, these are four beasts. This one here has all the qualities in one beast. But this one here said he had four beasts. The first was like a lion uh, and had the eagle's wings. And, and I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. So he had wings for a time, but he lost them. And it and was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the, his feet as a man. And as a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, the second beast, like unto a bear. And it raised up half one side and had three ribs in his mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus, it Unto it, arise, devour much flesh. And this I beheld in another, like unto a leopard. Okay, you know, we've got a lion, a bear, and a leopard. The leopard, which had upon its back four wings of, the of a fowl, and the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night vision, behold, fourth beast, dreadful, terrible, strong, exceeding. And it had great iron teeth, okay? It didn't say it looked like anything, but it had great iron teeth. It devoureth and breaketh in pieces and stampeth the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the other beasts. It was different than all other beasts that, was, that were before it. 
and it had ten horns. I consider the horns. And behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there was three of the first horn plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. And I beheld till the throne, till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Who's the Ancient of Days? God. He's the one who's in charge of all the days. And that's the phrase that refers to God. I beheld unto the Ancient of Days sits, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair, the head like pure wool. His throne was like fiery flames, and his wheel, the wheels uh, as burning fire. Now, if you remember chapter 1, God had the wool hair and the feet and brass and like fire and fiery eyes and so forth. So, in verse 10, and, and fiery streams issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. Well, that sounds like Revelation chapter 18 or really chapter 20. The books were open. Verse 11, And I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words, which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the, be burned in flames. The first beast, the Antichrist. I watched all this until God stepped out of the clouds, and the beast, the Antichrist, was slain, and he was thrown in a fire pit, which is what happens in the book of Revelation. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man, who is this? Jesus, came with clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and kingdom. What is this? This is the reign of Jesus on the planet. He was given glory and kingdom, and the people of the nations and languages should serve him, and his dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which is not destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, <clears throat> and the vision of my head troubled me, and I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of this thing. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I know, would know the truth of the four beasts, which were diverse from all the others, different than all the others, exceeding dreadful, worse teeth, the fourth beast was worse than all the rest of them, exceedingly dreadful, uh, whose teeth were of iron, his nails brass, his, in which he would devour and break in pieces, stamp the residue with, with his feet. And of the ten horns that were on his head of, other, of the other, which came up and before <clears throat> whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints and the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. This, he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth which shall be diverse, different from all the other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it into pieces. And the ten horns out of the kingdom were ten kings, who shall reign, and another shall rise up out of them, after them. And he shall be diverse or different from them, from the first. He shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into the, his hand until the time and times and dividing of times. But the judgment shall sit. The judgment shall sit 
and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion of the greatness of the kingdom of whose heaven, the whole heaven, shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is everlasting, and the dominion shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. For As for me, Daniel, my cognition much troubled me, and my continence changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Now, that's a lot of verses. That's 28 verses. And I would challenge you to go back and read it for yourself after we kind of digest this chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. So what do we have here? Okay? We have the Antichrist, who is the fourth beast in Daniel chapter 7. Okay? He's the fourth beast. Now, he is an extension of the Roman Empire. Now, what we've got here is we have the first beast, who, who is really uh, Babylon. And the second beast is the Medes and the Persians. And the third beast is the Greeks. And the fourth beast with the teeth of iron is the Romans. But he never, the Romans never really go away until the Ancient of Days comes. Now, I want you to think about this because this is big news. Think about this. We still reuse a Roman calendar. We use Roman numerals. We use a lot of Roman stuff. Matter of fact, even the United States' government is, has a lot of Romanness in it. The, you know, the Congress, the, Const the Senate... Uh, the, the Constitution has a whole lot of Romanness in it. We don't have an emperor, but Rome didn't always have an emperor. And so in there, they, 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 kind of, um, um, they kind of evolved, so to speak, in their government. But we have a lot of Rome. But Rome never did go away. Matter of fact, even when the Roman Empire fell, the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, picked it up and carried it. And it's still in operation today. It's just in operation in the Roman Catholic Church. Now listen to me. The Vatican is still in Rome. The Vatican is still in Rome. So the Roman Empire that came to be during the era that it came to be and was there when Jesus was born, it was there when Jesus was crucified, it was there when Jesus ascended, and it was there to persecute the church and for a couple hundred years did so. And even during the, even during the Crusades, the Roman Catholic Church is the ones who stopped the takeover of the world by the Muslims. And so even today, today, when I go today, uh, to many places in the world, the influence of the Romans is everywhere, even in the United States of America. So, so and in the Catholic Church, for example, is, is still the Roman Catholic Church. It's still the influence. So the power is still there. Okay? So really, the, the fourth beast really never went away. It just extended itself into uh, other areas of the world. Now, in chapter 13 here, as we're looking here, we see this Antichrist, this beast that rises up. And, of course, he's a symbol. And the beast is a symbol of a human being. And, and he's standing on the sand of the sea, and he's standing on the sea, and he rises up. And the, the three animals that are in chapter 13 describe this beast, refer back to, of course, Daniel chapter 7. And, and as we've read Daniel chapter 7, the four beasts pictured four succession kings or empires. The Babylonians, the lions, the Medes and the Persians, uh, the bears, uh, the Greeks, the leopards. And of course, the final beast, the Antichrist, is put off. The explanation of him is put off for later. All we know is he had teeth like iron. And he, he, was, he was to be a dreadful beast, according to Romans chapter 7, verse 8. He'd be a dreadful beast. Well, this is the this is Antichrist. He hadn't come in yet. So, you had, uh, you had the, the Babylonians, uh, which Daniel was under. Then you had the Medes and the Persians, which you know, became the Iranians, really, of today. And then you have uh, uh, the Greeks, which we have our Bible is translated into Greek, and we use a lot of Greek language and so forth. And then, of course, we have the Romans, and we have this influence of all four of these one-world powers. Now, one of the things they had in common is they ruled the known world at one time. And this Antichrist will rule the whole world during one, for one time. And he's an extension of the, the Roman Empire. And so that's, that's important because that's really something, just wrap your mind around that. And so in this little passage here, we're, we're reading here in chapter 13, as we're looking at this, uh, this beast, uh, it says in verse 1, And I stood upon the sands of the sea, he stood upon the sands of the sea, and I saw this beast rise up out of the sea, 
having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his uh, his horns crowns, or on his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads named blasphemy. And the beast that I saw was like to a leopard, uh, and his feet was like a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and, and the dragon gave him power. So that's three of the previous ones. Now, what is he saying? This beast is an extension because he is made up of all three, really four of these beasts in Daniel chapter 7. Now, the Daniel chapter 7 beast represented these kingdoms, and this Antichrist will be representing these kingdoms, these four one-world dictatorships that took place. Now, since then, we've had a lot of people like Hitler and like the Communist Party, and, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, Russians, the the, uh, the Chinese, I mean, uh, the communists, really, who come in various forms, have wanted to take over the world and rule the world. Now, America's not that way. We, we may conquer somebody, but we don't want to rule them. We'll help them. We can build them back. We conquered Japan, and then we went in there and built them back. And so even Iraq and in and, and our Desert Storm War, we tore the bridges down and went in and helped them build them back. And so we don't control them. We just conquer them, keep them out, get them out of our work, because we were raised to be a Christian nation. But the rest of these nations are trying to conquer the world. I mean, their ambition is to conquer the world, which is what we had in the Babylonians, in the, in the Medes and the Persians, of course, in the Greeks. And, you know, think about Alexander the Great with the Greeks. He was sad because he conquered everything he could find to conquer. And then, of course, the, the Romans came on the scene, and their, one of their biggest problems, they got bored because they had conquered everything. And so in the process of them falling, they didn't fall. They just, we've just, we've just developed the kingdom of Jesus Christ in the middle of the Roman influence and the previous influences. And we're waiting until the Antichrist comes on the scene. He will step up. He'll be an extension of those first three, really first four, count the Romans, and he will take his place and he will be the beast. He will be the Antichrist. He will be the human being that will run the world during the seven-year tribulation period. First three and a half kind, last three and a half like a monster. And, uh, and when this takes place, he, he comes out of that. And it will, he will run it until the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man, God and His Son, steps out of heaven and takes over. Of course, uh, Jesus will rule the world for a thousand years. And that's really what John saw. And he kept calling him the Ancient of Days, the Son of Man. The Ancient of Days, the Son of Man. And this will take place until that time. Now here in Revelation 13, we see that beginning to take shape. Daniel chapter 7's prophecy beginning to come on the scene. Daniel was, you know, uh, 600, AD, uh, 600 B.C., before Jesus, about 600, well, really about 600 years, 500, maybe 600, 650 years before Jesus was born, was Daniel. Okay, and then Jesus was born, he birthed the church, and we're, we've been running now for 2,000 years, and that the influence of those other kingdoms are still here, and then when the rapture takes place, the seven-year tribulation starts in the middle, the Antichrist will come up out of that Roman influence, that Roman empire, take his position, and he'll be ruthless, an extension of the first four uh, kingdoms, and now to rule the world for a time, for a time. All right, but also he kept saying over and over and over about the wound, the wound, the wound. So apparently this, this Antichrist here has a, has a head wound that takes place, a spear, a sword, a, a, a whatever, and he don't die, or either he dies and he resurrects. And some say he died and resurrects. Now, without question, the Antichrist has always wanted um, to mimic Christ. And so, you know, whatever, you know, God has a trinity. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So the devil wants a trinity. He's got the devil, the dragon, and, of course, the beast and the false prophet. So, so he's, he's created his own trinity. He's mimicking God. He's mimicking God. Jesus... Uh, was crucified, died, and resurrected, and so he's, you know, he's saying that uh, the beast here has had a head wound. We don't know how he got it. We don't know where he got it. We don't know when he got it. But he got a head wound and supposedly died and was resurrected by the dragon, the devil. And so, uh, you know, he's making the world think he's really a Superman, and he's backed by the devil. Okay, it's just important that we know that. And he said, and I saw one of the heads that were wounded to death. Verse three. 
and he had a deadly wound, was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Okay, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power to the beast. So it really wasn't the beast that's getting worshipped, it's the dragon that's getting worshipped, the devil. So really, this the devil has always wanted to be worshipped. And during the time of the seven-year tribulation period, he will get his wish. He will be worshipped through this beast because the activity of the beast or the Antichrist, all the tragedy and all the struggle and all the power that he will implement on the planet, uh, the, the devil will be the one who's backing him and he will be the one being worshipped. So they worshipped the dragon which gave power to the beast and they, and they worshipped the beast, both saying, who is like unto the beast, and who is like unto, who would make war against him? There was given to him a mouth speaking great things, to blasphemy, and power was given to him to continue for three and a half years. He opened his mouth with blasphemy against God. He blasphemed the name of God. He blasphemed the tabernacle of God and them that dwell in heaven. And it, it was given unto him to make war against the saints. Now, who are these saints? These are the ones that are, have become converted. These are the ones that the 144,000 have converted, as well as the two prophets converted. So there are people here now that are saved, or he wouldn't have them to make war against. Because he's not in heaven. I mean, he's already been executed, excommunicated out of heaven. So he made war against the saints, the saints, and and, and to overcome them. And power was given in him to, over all kindred, all tongue, all nations. Seemingly, he's ruling the world now. Seemingly, he's ruling the world now. If he's not ruling it, he's going to rule it. So watch this. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life and the lamb, the slain, and the foundation of the world. So we've got people here that's not saved and people here have gotten saved. <clears throat> and the ones who have gotten saved, he's persecuting. I mean, he's persecuting. Now, the saints are gone. The church is gone. But the people who have become born-again believers through the preaching of these preachers and so forth, I mean, they're, they're being persecuted uh, by this Antichrist. And all that dwell upon the earth uh, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall, be in, shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and patience of and, and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast, the second beast, the second beast, coming up out of the earth. Now the other one came up out of the sea. The world. This one comes up out of the earth. And he had two horns, like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he ex exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell thereon on the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So the goal here, notice, 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 the goal here is to have the devil worshiped and the Antichrist worshiped. I mean, that's the goal. He wants to be worshiped. What did the, what did the devil do in, in Isaiah chapter 14? What did he say? I want to be like the most high. He wanted to be like the most high. He wants to be like God. He is a created being of God, but he wanted to be like God. So he's finally getting what he wanted, and that is to be worshipped. And so he that leadeth into captivity shall be in, go into captivity. Eventually, those that are suppressing will be suppressed. Those that are killing will be killed. He that takes a sword and kills with a sword will be the one that kills with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Just be patient, guys. Just be patient. Remember, they were under the altar praying, God, when are you going to avenge our death? He said, just be patient, guys. Just be patient. And the second beast comes up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the powers of the first beast. Now, what do you mean he has two horns like a lamb? Like a lamb. Now, he didn't say... You know, he didn't say he has two horns like a goat. He said he had two horns like a lamb because it's, it's a picture of a sacrifice. It's a picture of something good, something sweet. But when he talked, he looked like something sweet. When you look at a lamb, not a ram, but a lamb, a lamb's a baby with a little bit of horns. Uh, he, he, he looks like something sweet, but when he talked, you could hear dragon coming out of him. He didn't sound like a lamb. He sounded like a dragon. And, it, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, causing the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That was his goal. Now, who is this? This is, this is really the Antichrist prophet. This is the Antichrist preacher. This is the Antichrist spiritual leader. 
okay? And so he becomes this person who's promoting the Antichrist now. The Antichrist promotes the dragon or the devil, and the little, uh, the, the prophet of the Antichrist, this lamb that talks like a dragon, promotes the Antichrist himself. It's, it's kind of like the Holy Spirit. See, the Trinity of God, the, the Son promoted the Father, and the Holy Spirit promoted the Son. Well, here you've got this Trinity. You've got the, the beast, you've got uh, the false prophet, and, and of course, uh, you got the devil. So you got the devil, the, the beast, and the false prophet. So the the beast promotes the devil, and the false prophet, or really, the, you know, the false prophet promotes the beast. And so it's it's a it's a mimic of the uh, of the Trinity that God has put on the face of the earth. And so he and he said he exercised all this power, all this prophetic power, uh, all this personal power that had been given to him. Uh, to, on the earth, but yet his goal was to have people worship the beast. And in verse 13, and he do, doeth great wonders, I mean, he could do miracles, uh, that he make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. I mean, he could do wonders. He deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of his miracles, which he had power to do. Who is he? He is He's the prophet. He's the miracle worker. Okay, now let's just play this out. I mean, we've got imagery here of beasts, but it's really humans, okay? Uh, we have the devil who is behind it all, and we have a human, just like when God was behind Christ, the power behind Christ. Jesus made it very clear, I'm nothing without my Father. But, and, but he glorified the Father, but the Father empowered him, okay? The Holy Spirit comes on the scene, and he glorifies the Son, but the Son is empowering him in the words of Jesus, the name of Jesus, and the work of Jesus. In this, we've got the devil who is there, and he's got a human, just like Jesus was a human, a human on earth representing the kingdom of the devil. And and he is glorifying the beast. Now, uh, he's he's the he's the person. He's the person, but he has a prophet, he has he has a, a spiritual guru of sorts uh, that is that is miraculously walking around healing people and doing miraculous things and calling fire down from heaven and all that kind of stuff. Amazing people. And he says here in verse uh, number 14, he says, and deceive, he deceived them that dwelt on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by a sword uh, and he did live. So we, we have a reference to that wound again. So a wound over and over and over of this beast. He, he was wounded, he lived. He was wounded, he lived. He was wounded, he lived. Because that was a big deal. You know, he, he had the power to get this type of wound and either resurrect or live. And so they kept re rehashing that over and over. And he had the power to give life into the image of the beast. So when they made this robotic beast, it seemingly was a robot, it come to life. It come to life, and the beast had the power to empower him, and caused that as many as would not worship the beast should be killed. And so the Antichrist now is all about himself. He's all about being worshipped, having a beast made, I mean, an image made of him, and that image even seemingly being alive. And uh, and in the process of this, really, uh, and, and let me just put this in practical uh, uh, life here. You know, today we have this thing called holograms, holograms. I mean, for example, I could be preaching here and they could have me somewhere else and it would look just like me, but it wouldn't be anything in me. You know, uh, they have sermon, uh, preaching services now, churches now that have uh, satellite churches. And some of them have the preacher up on the wall, but some of them have holograms. And the guy's standing there and you think he's there, but he's not there. If you walk up, you can run your hand completely through him. He's a hologram. This may be a hologram. I mean, it may. John is describing what he's seeing, and he's seeing the beast here that, uh, without question, has an image of the beast that has become alive. So, you know, it may be something to that effect. I'm not saying it is, but some people would say that's crazy. But I'm just telling you, in the days of John, he didn't know how to describe some of the things that we know of today. And so uh, he says, you know, this one had the power to bring life to the beast. or the image. They made an image and they created him and made a life of the beast. And, and he said, but this is the goal. Number one, that the beast be worshipped. Really, the devil's being worshipped. But the beast be worshipped. Who empower, who's empowering the beast? The devil. 
Let the beast be worshipped. Everything was about the beast being worshipped. Everything was about the beast having a wound and, and living, and that was a big deal. And now the false prophet comes on the scene. He could do miracles, and he could amaze people with the things that he could do. And, and he points to the one who's had the wound and yet lived and wanted everybody to worship him. And so he says, <clears throat> he calls, verse 16, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy, sell, save he that had this the mark of the name of the beast and the name of uh, the number of the beast. And his, here's wisdom, he said, Let him that understandeth count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score and six. Six hundred and sixty-six. Six hundred and sixty-six. Now, chapter 13 really throws the Antichrist into a world of domination. Okay? And again, we can look at the world today and see if the Communist Party, for example, had their way, this is the type of stuff they would implode on people. I mean, they'd put this on, on the human race. You know, this is what you're going to do, like it or not, but this is what you're going to do. Also, if the Islamic uh, terrorist group, or the you know, ISIS group got in charge, they would, they would put something like this into play. I mean... They, they want to control, and they want to tell you what you can and cannot do. And so we can see that. My only reason for saying that is we can see how that could be imp implemented and how this could possibly be. The COVID thing this year, well, it just gave us a, re a way to realize how rationing of things and how, how the lack of food and the lack of things causes people to panic, causes people to be able to do, be willing to do whatever it takes to get something to eat or to take care of their family. So this is kind of where we're headed now. And we're looking at that. You know, right now, you may be watching this later, but right now in, Ju in June of 2021, we have this thing called cicada that's coming up out of the ground. And they're everywhere. Now, can you imagine if those things were larger? Maybe they could bite. Or they could do some destruction. Or maybe they could eat the boards off your house. You know, they're everywhere in Maryland. I don't know if they were anywhere else or not, but they're in Maryland. They're coming up out of the ground. They have a hole about the size of your thumb. They come up out of the ground, and they f just feel the trees. They fly everywhere. Now, they're not hurting anything. They're not eating anything. I mean, they're not causing any damage, but suppose they was. You know, what could we do about it? Now, we could spray or whatever, but suppose they were bigger. You see, we're living in a day and time when we're seeing a lot of things that possibly could be. And we're reading a book that's telling us things that's just off our, our charts, uh, understandable for us. We're thinking, man, how can we understand this at all? But years ago, they trusted and believed whether they understood or not. Today, we're seeing a lot of it more visible in our minds because we're able to see it taking shape in the world. And so as we look at this, we're seeing that the whole goal of the Antichrist was to be worshipped, which in turn the devil was being worshipped. And now he's at a point where he is not only encouraging worship, he's causing miracles to happen to try to get people to worship, but also because he's, he's, he's declaring himself to be worshipped. He, and the, the, the devil, of course, has empowered him to be worshipped. Now he's got this false prophet that's trying to get people to worship him. False prophet's doing miracles, pointing out the fact that he has taken a head wound and still lived to worship him. He's got all this authority. He's got all this power. He's this great in, individual. Worship him. And now he said, okay, if you didn't worship me because of free will, now I'm going to cut off your food if you don't worship me. And he's forcing everybody to take a mark. And so we will get into chapter 14 next, next week which really, um, you know, we're, we're in the thick of things here with the Antichrist. We're in the thick of things with, with the tribulation period in the last half. I mean, it's, it's getting uh, worse and worse. People are hiding from him. They're trying to get out of the way. And, of course, people are trailing them, trying to track them, find out where they are. They haven't tried to find a place to hide if they're believers. If they're not believers, they just knuckle under this. If they're front and scared, if they want food, if they'll do anything they can to get food to feed their families like we've seen in COVID, they'll take the mark. They'll take the mark. And so, you know, there's never been a greater time to be able to see how this stuff could unfold right before our very eyes. And so I want to challenge you to read chapter 12 and, and digest that and watch last week's message on our line and read chapter 13 
and listen, re-listen again to this, which we're talking about the introduction of the Antichrist and the false prophet, and, and the goal of the Antichrist to be worshipped, and the false prophet to get the Antichrist worshipped. And then finally, the mark of the beast and the not buying and selling unless you take it, the force worship of the mark of the beast. It's all about the devil being worshipped. We started last last week with talking about the conflict, the, the earthly conflict, the heavenly conflict, and the war between God and, and Satan, or uh, the angels on God's side and Satan and his angels. Uh, this is manifest itself, but God's giving him authority to do this. He's not... He's not more powerful than God. He's not even in a race with God. But God's allowing all this to take place so that the world will see this terrible ordeal take place and, of course, turn to God. And with that, he's got all these preachers that are doing their best to take care uh, of, of, of the, the saints. In verse four, uh, chapter 14, verse 1, I'll read one more verse, and I'll close with this. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, which is in Israel, and with him, 144,000, having the Father's name written in their forehead. And I heard a voice from, seven, from heaven, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of the great thunder. And I heard the voice of harps and harping with harps. And they sang as it were a new song. Folks, I mean, chapter 13 is depressing. But chapter 14, we see and we know God is really in charge. God bless you. I'll see you next time.